Hello students, I am Azizi, Professor Electronics. In our previous session, we have learned that what is serial communication and how to configure different registers of MCS51 family for serial communication. We have also learned that what is baud rate and how to calculate the baud rate for serial communication. In this session, we will write a program to communicate the microcontroller over serial link with a hyperterminal. We will send different messages to the microcontroller from the hyperterminal and we will get the response of the microcontroller to the hyperterminal. So, let's start our today's session. Here we can find our previously developed circuit of microcontroller that is 889C51 microcontroller. We have connected LCD on port 0 of the microcontroller and we have connected 3 switches on port 2.0, 2.1 and port 2.2. Now to write the serial communication program on this hardware, first we will modify this hardware and we will connect 4 LEDs on port 1 and we will connect 4 switches on port 1. We will connect 4 LEDs on port 1 that is from port 1.0 to port 1.3 and we will connect 4 switches with port 1 that is from port 1.4 to port 1.7. So, first we will modify this circuit then we will write our program for serial communication. And here we have connected 4 switches with port 1.4, port 1.5, port 1.6 and port 1.7. All these 4 switches are active low. It means that by default the status of all ports will be high and if we will press any switch then the status of the corresponding port will be low. In this configuration we can say that all switches are active low. And now we will connect an active serial port with the pins of UART that is RXD and TXT pin number 10 and 11. So, we will go to the components, parts and we will write that is COMP IM. And here we have an active model for COMP port physical interface. Okay. And now we will place the active COMP port here. And now we will connect the RXD and TXD pins of the port with the RXD and TXD port of the microcontroller. And here we will assign a label, right click, place a wire label that is RXD. Okay. And here we will place a label that is TXD. And here we will place the same label on pin number 10 and on pin number 11. That is RXD. And TXT. And here we have completed our circuit for the serial communication program. Here we have connected 4 LEDs with port 1.0, 1.1, 1.2 and 1.3 and we have connected 4 switches on port 1.4, 1.5, 1.6 and port 1.7. Now we will define the command so we read the status of the counter which is running on the LCD. We will also send the command from the hyper terminal to read the status of all 4 switches and we will write the command to control the status of all 4 LEDs from the hyper terminal. So first we will define the protocol so we read the value of the counter from the microcontroller to read the status of the switches from the microcontroller and to control the status of all 4 LEDs from the hyper terminal. And here we have defined different commands to perform different tasks during serial communication with the microcontroller. The dollar sign that is starting character, SND CNT means send the value of the counter and the end character that is hash. Similarly, we have defined a command that is dollar SND switch means send the status of the switches and hash as end character. And we have defined 8 different commands to switch on and switch off 4 LEDs. That is dollar sign set LED1. It means switch on LED1 and the end character that is hash dollar sign clear LED1 that is switch off LED1 and the end character that is hash. Similarly, set LED2 clear LED2 set LED3 clear LED3 set LED4 and clear LED4. All these commands are our own defined commands. We can define any command to communicate the microcontroller over serial link. Here we have inserted a dollar sign in the beginning and hash at the end. We will send these commands from the hyper terminal to the microcontroller. The microcontroller will check if the first character is dollar and the end character is hash. It means that the command between dollar sign and hash sign is a valid command. If the microcontroller will not find the dollar sign in the beginning of the message, it will discard the message. So the microcontroller will check the first character that is dollar and the end character that is hash. Then it will accept the command. All the command messages which we have defined to communicate the microcontroller over serial link with a hyper terminal are based on 8 characters that is from dollar, SND, CNT, 6 characters and the end character that is hash character. 
and now we'll modify our previously written program to communicate the microcontroller over serial link with the hyper terminal and here we have a previously written program that is counter project 2 now we'll save this file with the new name that is serial communication program so we'll go to the file save as and here we will assign the name to the file that is serial project 1 so here we will write that is and here we have assigned the name to a new file that is serial project 1 ok save and now we will develop a new project that is project close project project new microvision project and here we will assign the name to the project that is serial project 1 ok save now we will select the microcontroller that is 89C51 ok target 1 right click option for target 1 crystal oscillator frequency is 12 megahertz output create hex file ok source group 1 add existing file and here we have the file that is serial project 1 add First, we'll save the name of the project and here we have changed the comments that is serial communication project and here in timer 0 interrupt service routine we have written a command that is complement port 1.0 as we are using the port 1.0 in our new circuit for the LED. So, we'll remove this command from our program and here we can find the directives for our program that is ORG00H jump initialization routine ORG00BH L jump timer 0 interrupt service routine org 30h and here we have start writing our initialization routine from 30h and now we we'll insert a new address in our directives that is 0023h which is the address for interrupt factor for serial interrupt service routine so here we will write that is org 0023h and here we will write that is l jump SER underscore ISR that is serial interrupt service routine and here we can find the T mode register and we have moved the value that is 0 1 to the T mode in our previous program we have initialized the T mode register for timer 0 only that is timer 0 in 16 bit timer mode now in this program we will also initialize the timer 1 as 8 bit auto reload mode timer and to initialize the T mode register for timer 0 as 16 bit timer and timer 1 as 8 bit auto reload mode we will initialize the TMO register with a new value that is 21 and we will also modify the value of the register that is interrupt enable and here we have the value that is 82 and now in interrupt enable register we will also set the bit for serial interrupt and the new value for interrupt enable register will be 92 and here we can find the interrupt enable register that is external 0 interrupt enable timer 0 interrupt enable external 1 interrupt enable timer 1 interrupt enable, serial interrupt enable, timer 2 interrupt enable, spare and global interrupt enable. In our previous program we have set the bit that is timer 0 interrupt enable and global interrupt enable. Now we have set the bit that is serial interrupt enable. It means the value will be 8 and 1 9 and here we have 2 that is 92 H. We will set the baud rate for serial communication as 2400 that is 2400 bits per second. So here we will write that is move th1 comma hash and here we can find for the baud rate that is 2400 as we are using the crystal oscillator of 12 megahertz and by default the value of s mode will be 0 then the value for the timer 1 high will be minus 13 or f3h the actual baud rate will be 2404 and the error will be 0.16 percent so we will move the value that is minus 13 to the timer 1 high and here we will write that is minus 13 and here we will set the bit that is tr1 to run the timer 1 so here we will write that is set bit tr1 and here we will add a comment that is timer 1 start so here in our new program we have modified the value of t mode register we have modified the value of interrupt enable register we have moved the value to the timer 1 high as minus 13 and we have also set the bit that is tr1 to start the timer 1 and here we can find two bits in scom that is transmit interrupt and receive interrupt 
We will clear the status of both the bits that is receive interrupt and transmit interrupt in our initialization routine. And here we will write that is clear ti and we will write that is clear ri that is clear transmit interrupt and clear receive interrupt. As we have defined the commands based on 8 characters that is dollar then 6 characters and the hash character. To receive these characters in microcontroller we have to define 8 registers and here we will define our new variables that is receive register equ 3dh and now we will define 8 registers to receive 8 characters that is rec underscore reg0 equ 3eh and rec reg1 equ 3fh and here we have defined 8 registers to receive 8 characters. Here we can see receive register 0, receive register 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It means from 0 to 7 that is 8 registers. Now we will use these registers in our serial communication routine. And now we will write our serial communication interrupt service routine that is SER ISR. And here after timer 0 interrupt service routine we will write the serial interrupt service routine. And here we will write that is SER ISR using colon. Whenever the transmit interrupt or receive interrupt will be set, our program will jump to the address that is 0023H and our program will come to the routine that is serial interrupt service routine. So first in serial interrupt service routine, we will save the contents of the accumulator to the stack. So here we will write that is push ACC that is push accumulator. So we have saved the contents of the accumulator to the stack and whenever our program will return back from the serial interrupt service routine, we will move the safe contents of the accumulator from the stack to the accumulator and on next line we will also save the contents of the program status word. So here we will write that is push PSW that is program status word and here on next line we will check if the interrupt has occurred due to the transmit of the data. So here we will write that is jump not bit that is ti. If the interrupt was not due to transmit data then jump to a subroutine that is rec underscore data. But if the interrupt was due to transmit data then we will write that is clear ti and jump ser underscore ext and here on next line we will write the subroutine that is receive data. So here we will write that is rec data using colon and here we will write that is jump not bit receive interrupt comma serext If the interrupt was not due to receive data then jump to serial exit. But if the interrupt was due to the receive data in serial buffer then a program will come to the next line and here we will write that is move accumulator comma as buff that is receive the data from the serial buffer to the accumulator. As we will receive the string of the 8 characters so we will write that is move rec underscore reg0 comma rec underscore reg1 move the contents of the receive register 1 to the content of receive register 0 and we will write that is move rec underscore reg1 comma rec underscore reg2 similarly we will move the data of the receive register 3 to the receive register 2 so we will write that is move rec underscore reg2 comma rec underscore reg3 and now we will move the contents of the accumulator to the receive register 7. So here we will write that is move rec underscore reg7 comma a to receive the command from any remote terminal that is hyper terminal 
the sieve interrupt will come eight times and our program will jump to the serial interrupt service routine eight times. So we have moved the data of the receive register 7 to the receive register 6, register 6 to the 5, 5 to 4 and 4 to 3, 3 to 2, 2 to 1 and 1 to 0. So each time the data will be shifted to the previous register. In this case, if the 8 characters will be received, then the register from receive register 0 to the receive register 7 will be loaded with the 8 characters. Now to check the length of the message, if the 8 characters are received or not, we will define a register that is message length. And here we will define a new variable that is msg underscore len message length equ 46h and we will also initialize this register in our initialization routine. And here we will write that is move message length comma hash 00h and here after receiving each character we will increment the register that is message length so here we will write that is inc increment msg underscore len if the eight characters will be received then the value of the register that is message length will be eight after incrementing the value of the message length, our program will get returned from the interrupt service routine. So here we will write that is clear, receive interrupt. And now we will write the serial exit routine. Here we will write that is SCR underscore EXT using colon. And here we will write that is POP. program status word then pop accumulator and reti that is return interrupt here we have completed our serial interrupt service routine now we will write a subroutine that is send counter value and here in main program we will call another subroutine that is send counter value so here we will write that is call SND CNTR that is send counter and here after switches routine we will write our new routine that is send counter routine. So here we will write SND underscore CNTR using colon as we have written in our previous program that the counter value will be incremented in timer zero interrupt service routine and here we can find the timer zero interrupt service routine and here in this routine we are incrementing the value of unit digit. We are incrementing the value of 10 digit and 100 digit and whenever we will call the send counter routine we will check that the process of timer 0 interrupt service routine is completed or not. For this purpose we will define another flag that is T0FLG and here we will define another flag that is T0FLG that is bit 01H. The second bit of bit addressable RAM location and here we can find the bit addressable RAM location starting from 00H, 01, 02, 03, 04, 05 up to 2FH. We have used the location that is 00H and 01H. So here we have defined the T0 flag bit that is 01H. We will also clear the status of this flag bit in our initialization routine. So here we will write that is clear T0 underscore FLG and here before exiting the timer 0 interrupt service routine we will set the flag that is T0 flag so here we will write that is set bit T0 underscore FLG it means that the timer 0 interrupt service routine process has been completed so we will use this flag that is timer 0 flag in our send counter routine so here we will write that is jump not bit T0 underscore FLG comma SND CNTR underscore EXT. If the status of the T0 flag will be set then our program will come to the next line and here we will check the length of the message we have received in a serial interrupt service routine. So here we will write that is move accumulator comma MSG underscore LEN it means move the message length to the accumulator. Now compare jump not equal 
accumulator comma hash 8 comma send counter exit it means if the length of the receive message is not 8 characters then exit from the send counter routine but if the length of the message will be 8 character then our program will come to the next line and here we will write that is move accumulator comma rec reg0 and here we have moved the value of the receive register 0 to the accumulator so here we will write that is compare jump not equal accumulator comma hash the character that is dollar comma send counter exit it means that we have checked that if the first character is a dollar if the value of the first character will be dollar then a program will come to the next line and here we will write that is move accumulator comma rec underscore reg7 and we'll compare that compare jump not equal accumulator comma hash the last character that is hash character hash comma s e n d c n t r e x t it means if the last character received in the receive register 7 will not be equal to the hash then exit from the send counter routine and here we will write that is move accumulator comma rec underscore reg 1 here we can find the first character is s then n then d then c and t so we'll compare all these six register in our subroutine and here we'll compare if the value of the receive register 1 will be s so here we will write that is compare jump not equal accumulator comma hash the character that is s comma send counter exit control v if the value of the receive register 1 will be s then a program will come to the next line and here we will write that is move accumulator comma rec underscore reg2 and here we will compare the value of the receive register 2 with n so here we will write that is compare jump not equal accumulator comma hash the character n comma send counter exit and now we'll check the receive register 3 for the character of the d so we'll write that is move accumulator comma rec underscore reg3 and we'll check that is compare jump not equal accumulator comma hash the character that is d comma and now we will check the receive register 4 5 and 6 so we will write that is move So here we have compared all 8 received characters for the message 1 that is dollar and the end character is hash and the message is s and d c and t it means send the value of the counter if all 8 received characters will be matched with these characters then a program will come to this line and here we will reinitialize the register that is message length so here we will write that is move msg underscore len comma hash 00 h and now we will send the value of the unit digit 10 digit and 100 digit of the counter so here we will write that is move accumulator comma uni underscore dig to convert this number that is unit digit into the equivalent ASCII digit first we'll end the number with 0 fh so here we will write that is anl 
accumulator comma hash 0 fh it means we have masked the higher number of the unit digit and now we'll order the accumulator with the number 30h to make the unit digit as equivalent ASCII number so here we will write that is ORL accumulator comma hash 30h and now we will move the value of the accumulator to the transmit buffer so we'll write that is move s buff comma a after moving the data to the transmit buffer we will wait for the transmit interrupt so here we will write that is jump not bit ti that is transmit interrupt comma dollar it means that if the transmit interrupt is not set then jump to the same line whenever the s buff will be empty after transmitting the data to the serial line our program will come to the next line and here we will write that is move accumulator comma 10 digit and we will repeat the same procedure that is and logic control c and control v it means move the value of the 10 digit to the accumulator then apply and logic to the accumulator to mask the higher neighbor of 10 digit then apply or logic to the accumulator with 30 h to make the 10 digit as ascii equivalent now move the value of the accumulator to the s buff wait for the complete transmission of the s buffer if the transmission will be completed then our program will come to the next line and here we'll move the value of the 100 digit so we will write that is hun underscore dig and we will repeat the same procedure control c and we will write control v and here we can check we are sending the first number that is unit digit then 10 digit and then 100 digit so first we'll send the 100 digit so here we will write that is 100 digit hun then 10 digit then unit digit after sending all three numbers that is unit digit 10 digit and 100 digit our program will get written from the subroutine but before returning the subroutine we will clear the status of t0 flag so here we will write that is control v send counter exit using colon and here we will write that is clear t0 flag and return interrupt here we have completed our send counter routine in this routine we have checked that if the status of the t0 flag will be 1 then our program will come to the next line otherwise it will get exit from the subroutine then our program will check the message length if the message length will be 8 then our program will come to the next line and it will check the first character in receive register 0 if the first character will be equal to dollar then our program will check the receive register 7 if the value of the receive register 7 will be equal to hash then our program will come to the next line and it will check the message that is s and d c and t if all characters will be matched then our program will come to the next line and it will clear the length of the message and it will reinitialize the length of the message to the 00h then it will move the value of the 100 digit to the accumulator and send the value to the s buff after converting the number into the equivalent ascii similarly our program will send the number that is 10 digit and the unit digit and after sending all three digits our program will get returned from the subroutine but before returning the subroutine our program will clear the status of timer zero flag now we'll compile our program and we will check the result of our program on proteus and here we can find we have pushed the accumulator first then we have pushed the program status word and before returning the interrupt service routine we have popped the value of program status word first then we have popped the value of accumulator and now we'll compile our program here we can check two errors and here on line number 291 we have written the wrong subroutine name so we'll correct this name that is control c and control v and now we'll compile our program once again here we have another error and we will also change the name of the subroutine control v and here we can check we have not initialized the scon register here we can set in scon register we have to set the bit that is sm1 and we have to clear the bit that is sm0 and we have to set the bit that is ren it means that if we'll set the bit that is sm1 
and we'll set the bit that is REN. It means that the value of the SCON register will be 50, that is 4 and the 1 will be equals to 50. So we will initialize this SCON register in our initialization routine and here we will initialize the SCON register that is move SCON comma hash 50H and now we'll compile our program once again and we'll observe the result of our program on Proteus. Okay, compile. As we'll communicate the Proteus software that is a USR terminal of the Micro C Pro for 8051. So we'll use a virtual serial port driver and we will add a COM port here. And here we have a pair that is COM port 2 and COM port 3. Here we will use a USR terminal of Micro C Pro for 8051. So we'll select the COM port 3 here that is COM port 3 and we'll set the baud rate that is 2400 and we'll set the data format as ASCII format and now we'll connect the COM port 3. Okay, edit properties and here we can find the COM port 2 is selected and the baud rate is 2400 and the virtual baud rate is also 2400. Okay, and now we'll load the new hex file, right click, edit properties and here we have the hex file that is serial project 1. Okay. And now we'll run the simulation. As we can see, we have assigned the variable that is receive register 0 to the address that is 3EH. Now we'll check this address that is 3EH in Proteus software. And here we will add that is add address 0x003E. And we'll set the data type that is ASCII string. Okay, add. Done. Now we'll send the command from the hyper terminal that is send counter value and here we will write that is dollar s and d c and t and hash is the command to read the counter value and now we'll send the command to the microcontroller ok send and here we can find we have received three characters that is 000 and here we can find the value of the counter is 000 and here we can find we have received a string that is dollar send counter and hash and now we'll run the counter by pressing switch 1 now we can check the counter is incrementing and now we'll send the command once again ok send here we can check the value is 19 we'll send the command once again now the value of the counter is 29 and here we can check the value is 33. It means that we have successfully completed our first serial program and we have learned that how to write a serial communication program for the microcontroller that is 889C51 microcontroller. The procedure is same for other members of MCS51 family. In our next session, we'll modify our program to read the status of the switches and we'll also modify the program to control the status of the LEDs which is connected on port 1.0, 1.1, 1.2 and 1.3. Okay, see you in the next session with a new program. Thanks for watching the Assembly Language Programming course. We hope that you find this course very helpful to learn Assembly Language Programming. If you feel that this course contributes and enhances your embedded system design knowledge, then go ahead and hit like, share and subscribe buttons. And do not forget to press bell icon to stay updated with every new upcoming video from Electro Educators as soon as it goes up. Electro Educators also offers technical consultancy in following fields. For assistance regarding technical problems, projects and any consultancy, feel free to reach out at our email address electroeducators at gmail.com. Okay, see you in next lecture.